Hey everybody, it's E. I am back. Sorry for that delay. I think uh, Letterfat and I have been trying to share the duties and I think something happened with the stream key. I'm not quite sure. Uh, as I suggested on Facebook, I already played two rounds of this deck. We're playing tokens today and the reason being so that we can go right back if our opponent takes forever to show up. I'm going to go over to the uh, deck list and show you the, up the update. Excuse me. So we've got our typical tokens list. I've got 20 lands, two quicksands. They're mostly for ninjas. We have a ton of Soul Sister style effects. This one uh, being the worst if you ever needed to kill one. Our Doom Traveler is a two for one. We've got Journey to Nowhere, Raise the Alarm, Squadron Hawk, Guardian's Pledge. Uh, I'm only running three now. Often it, they were kind of clogging my hand. Uh, always have one Sens Enlistment. Retrace, definitely one of the favorite. <laughs> Hey Hods, nice to see you. Sorry for the delay there. Uh, Letterfight and I are kind of trying to hold hands on this project and I think it uh, caused quite a bit of a hiccup there. Remotion Rally I've really enjoyed because there's um, just enough like shrivel and uh, electric effects out there. I like having access to these main. It's a nice combat trick too. Uh, it just feels right at two. Four Battle Screech, two or Let Bure. And in our sideboard, we've got, you know, the super defense of Luma Thread Field, Standard Bearer, Fairy Macabre, which is the big difference from the last time I played this deck. Um, just throwing all four in there out of respect to Drake and four Prismatic Strands, which in this deck, hey, need to know, good to see ya. In this deck, Prismatic Strands is a Wrath of God and Pauper. And what I mean by that is when you're playing all white creatures and there's this big attack going down you can literally kill every creature on their board and they can't kill yours and you can do it twice and it's an instant so if that isn't a mythic rare i don't know what is when with in in this deck prismatic strands is it feels like a mythic rare um and similar to what i was just saying about playing already two rounds i'm going to just run over there and we'll see if we can oh i i that's the issue I was gonna. I'm gonna run into. So we played uh, the first two rounds, and I will. I will show these later. I'm just trying to. Hopefully, we'll get to an opponent here soon. Um, our first round was against uh, Red Deck Wins, the not goblins, but the haste variant. I'm not quite sure what the perfect name for that is. And uh, we had a close one. I won at two one. I'll show you that replay in a little bit. And then uh, round two was against uh, Delver, and we went two zero, which is no big surprise. Let's see. Oh, yeah. All caps train in the house. Again, apologize for that little hiccup. Everything running smooth. And then the second I went to stream, I think since uh, we share a stream key or something or set one to see if it worked on Little Fights End, which is all the way across the country, I went to go hit live one minute before show and it's like error. So I had to go reset the password about 82 times and do all kinds of other stuff. So anyway, why do I need such a long name? Good to see you. Good times. Good times. And I'm going to go over to the stat sheet here. This is no exaggeration, folks. This is uh, this win and loss column. I've played this deck probably more than most. Um, well, definitely more than, than most. But for me, this is the when I really started uh, taking notes vigorously and seriously. And, uh, oh, here we go. Let's join up our match. And that Delver matchup is no joke. It's uh, Unless you draw really dead, you, you're pretty much uh, almost, it's almost a guaranteed win. Oh, come on. We hit OK, and he's still going to take a while to show up? All right, here we go. Let's, uh, let's put this here. Doink. See what we can see. Yes. And I've got to really refrain from chatting too much with this deck because it can really get you. Oh, boy. I'm going to mug in that with, with one land. I'm going to keep this one got our life package we've got three plays even if we get screwed and we're running 20 lands plus we get to see what our next draw is here if everything's sounding all right my this room gets a little hot it's a nice uh cool day today but i'm i'm have a fan in here so let me know if it's distracting or if it just sounds a-okay be good to know we're going to lead out with our least favorite of the life gainers and i say that because you have to right click on this one a lot and it asks you two steps where other ones usually don't and here we go. Looks like we're running up against Hexproof, which we do have a very tough matchup against if we don't draw Standard Bear. You want to always right click, go always yes, always yield with this one. Just do it and and there's almost like a bug. It seems like when you F6 on your own turn, 
before attacking, it makes you keep resetting these. I've gone off on a, what do you call a tech support, telling them like, come on guys, you gotta gotta get this going. So we're gonna gain two life, pilgrim. Not not too bad. We we kind of want to get flooded here. Do -do -do. Yeah, well, we're guaranteed to have a better outing than the last Rogue ones because this one's a little bit serious and we're already up 2-0. Like I said, we'll, we'll show you those uh, matchups in a bit. Hmm. Yeah, this is when I really wish I could have a... I'm going to attack with this so that we just have some uh, bait for Selhana if she shows up. Hey, Shirazamon, thanks for joining us. Actually, glad you're a little late because we were a little late. Good to see ya. I think tomorrow we might run into the same issue because uh, Little Fight's probably going to be doing his own uh, broadcast, but we'll have to figure that out behind the behind the scenes. Maybe not. A pilgrim deck. I don't think I've seen this uh, avatar yet. Well, this is a good sign. Unless it gets trample real quick. Q trample effects in three, two. Yep, there it is. Well, hopefully our life be able to allow us to do a little bit of an alpha strike here. The only way you can really beat hexproof game one is you know kind of hope they draw a little bit dead. We're just here to gain life, and hopefully he doesn't have an armadillo cloak backup. We're not going to block anything. We're just going to try to outrace him with the sisters. This is a pretty, it's it's a close matchup. There's no jokes. That was an interesting play. Here we go. So maybe this will put a little respect on it. And unless the armadillo cloak shows up. Oh, sounds like it's here. I see the mana for it. Did he get it? Let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Shabrazama, need to know. How did everybody's week go, man? What you guys, anything amazing, curious, or weird happen? Hey, Shiraz, real quick, check out my uh, face. I got this new Terry Pratchett book. It's called The Slip of the Keyboard. It's not a novel, but it's, uh, it's just a really good memoir. It talks about a lot of little... Oh, boy, this is going to be a hard game here. It's just a really cool take on everything. Hopefully he stays back and he doesn't know this this trick. He stays back. Well, no, the first strike's going to make him gain the life first. Normally, if you don't have first strike, you just attack with everything and, and the life goes on the stack and you're dead, but first strike's going to put him over the top. Thank you for the MTGO bot. Goldby Guy 01, thanks for joining us. Boy, big weekend on Twitch for Magic, not just us. I mean, the whole... Uh, that big Seattle convention PAX is going on and that new uh, Egyptian set's coming out. Everything looking pretty cool. Oh boy, I sure wish. Well, maybe we can um, make him fear us in the air here. And we'll just pass the turn. Do -do -do. Went 4 0 with Bugs and Trinket. Says, why do we need such a long name? Was a good week. Nice. Did you not play the fifth or are you just you're hovering at four? This is good times. We gain a life, gain a life. We could still win this if it doesn't, depends. If this is a, uh, he's probably going to grab another ethereal armor. Yep. Ancient India before Buddhism and Islam got there. Yeah. I was trying to kind of tell my kids about that with regards to, um, not to get too political, but Islam and all, you know, the terrorist stuff and everything. It's like, that's such a beautiful culture if, you know, the, the romanticism of it and the Alibaba and the Great Pyramids and it's just so much good stuff and kind of wrecked by, by the old, oh boy, you know, usually this is a dead card against Hexproof, but we sure are liking it here. So he's only going to get back the Rancor and all of a sudden we're back in it. And we've got nice backup in our uh, quicksands, but we got to start from scratch again. So let's hope we get a little anthem effect and go for the races. Ooh, 
that's no good. But we can block for days. Well, no, he's got the trample. Got to be careful. But there's no life gain happening. Ugh, this is rough. This is rough. Seven. I got to just let it through. Let's see. We need something good. Um, that might be able to gain us enough. Life. If we can block. Three tap creatures. All right, so we're at twelve. If he doesn't draw another enchantment, we can block. Tech with everything. We'll hold back. Let's see. Like this. Pretty fun matchup. Now that he doesn't have the uh, hexproof creatures, that Journey to Nowhere is usually a dead card, but we sure like seeing it there. It shows the power of tokens being able to absorb about 50 damage already some of it life gain we've killed this guy about twice on our end too so go be guy good to see you thanks for joining us yeah all cultures are violent definitely ours too i just uh, that romanticism of egypt i've always wanted to you know do the whole great pyramid thing and all that good stuff and uh just lame when you can't go to one life for the dramatic effect. You don't really want a chance running into any any sort of radicals, but woo, boy, that was a fun game. All right, off to the sideboards. The lack of I don't know if this is some new if anybody knows that this is some new deck take on stuff, uh, let me know. Uh, standard bears are really gonna shine here, as are our prismatic strands. I'm not too worried about like sandstorms or stuff. I'm going to leave all the rest of this stuff out. Um, I, I think I'm going to keep two journeys just because he's probably running Aura Gnarled and that can be a rough time. I'm going to take out the Order of Litbeer. There's not much first strike potential there. I'm going to take out one one priest just because they don't really have many um, that many creatures. It's it's uh, mostly set on volume. And um, you know what? I'll. I, I think I'm going to take out one rally. We're not really worried about electricity. Actually, I'm going to take out both rallies and put back in the priest for the life gain. Oops. Where am I? Why did I miscount here? Dun, dun, dun. Journey to set on two. Three. Maybe a doom. No. I'll take out one priest. So we're set. If you're just joining us, I played. Uh, we're trying a new formula just to prevent this super lag of opponents showing up. If it's taking too long, I'll just kill the clock and show you round one and two which we won both of and we'll go from there um, just to keep this stuff I've, it's not so much that you guys aren't willing to sit around for two or three hours it's just I can't it's, I've got to get up so it's it's getting uh, two hours is a really good number so hopefully we can finish it up a little bit more than that maybe we'll see yeah it'll, it'll be interesting going from Innistrad and all the, all the dark doom and gloom which I loved to uh, again, we always want to lead with this because it's our worst one. If he's got great or got shot, it'll pay dividends in the end. Just uh, believe me, Soul Warden's a better card for just time's sake. Um, but it'll be interesting. Kaladesh, the new plane that the uh, new new card set comes out on, is uh, just really based. Oh, that that'll hurt a little bit. That might be a good uh, target. Is is so bright and shiny and artifacts and all kinds of good stuff everywhere so I'll just bring this out and keep moving buffering is that on your end Shirazamon or everybody else seeing everything all right I'm a little gun shy after the little tech hiccup we had no fault of the software just on twitch's end and trying to share an account not the easiest thing to do this is interesting boy this guy's really a uh, I don't know if you got the memo about what hexproof is supposed to be like. This is gonna almost feel like a buy the way this guy's playing. I'm gonna take a lot of damage here, but we're in no hurry to really up the ante here. So I'm gonna play this. Would you like to do these awesome things? Yes, I would. Suit your priest. Oh, I remember that interview, a Little Fight. What a creep show. Let's show him to put all his eggs in one basket. 
and we're good to go. Probably Sands Enlistment to hold them off, trade with the uh, Archer with a Sands Token next turn, take some more damage, but again, every creature is just a, a healing salve for us. So, Yeah, this Need to Know says this is not very hexproof. It isn't, but I'm very fond of saying I, I don't like to ever diss anything new because I, I think that's a slippery slope. I'm, I'm very grateful that he's he's playing something so different that way, but it looks like it's doing the job here. 13, ouch. Well, this is an interesting uh, scenario. Cast Battle Screech, gain a bunch of life. He might be uh, forced to sit back and uh, deal with the life as opposed to attacking me. This is like I was just saying, I mean, laugh if you will, but he's winning. One, two, three. Let's get out of life range. And if we get one more land, it'll be pretty good times. This is this is a strange little conundrum of Ian. Like, do you kill all the birds or you let me alpha strike you and maybe win next turn? Why do I need such a long name? Not enough values in one ones. That's right. Go boy oh one. I play Popper, but I play Grixis Delver. That's pretty cool. Send a little fight a link. Let's see if we can uh, get a link up to that if anybody's curious about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a neat little scenario. I wonder what, what what he's on. He's got 13. But if I draw a land, this this is all ours unless Armadillo Cloak shows up. Hey, there's a real creature. Look at that. Well, let's see. Ooh, that hurts. That hurts bad. 13, 12. He doesn't have first strike. Can I? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll cast this first. I don't remember. I can probably just stay ahead on life here. I don't know why I tapped extra. I had a really strange night last night. I got technically to bed in plenty of time, and that's fine. Plenty of sleep. We're just we're concerned about living this next turn. And I just slept like crap. I just woke up real early. Couldn't go back to sleep. Felt like somebody uh, put caffeine in my pillow. That sucks. There's 15. I don't need to know. So he's getting all on board with this no hexproof thing, and then he goes and spoils it with the, the boggle showing up. I know. it's a. So what do we got to do to live? Let's just do that. We will... We're going to block with our flyers. It's our only way out. So it's 14, 13, 1 life. Back to one. Just making for a neat game, though. That's another reason I wanted to block with flyers. Assuming he's gonna. All right, we're gonna bring in uh, some more journey to nowhere next time. This is getting pretty ridiculous. I think this guy's as impatient as I am. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. We'll see. This is why you always want to right-click first and get all this stuff out of the way. 14. All right, all right. So we'll fly on over with this since it's going to die anyway. I should add a little frustration bonus. No. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, well, it's still like a extra shock. Oh yeah. That's interesting. Or after just sheer life gain here, he doesn't have the volume of stuff, so my suture priests are gonna go first. I'm gonna take one, so that's um seventeen. 14. So what's that? Fourteen. 
four, thirteen. Still got to block that one, and I'm I'm gonna double block here just in case we do top deck our other journey to nowhere. We'll be we'll be pretty happy. Just trying to stay alive here. Probably not gonna win this one. However, gotta remember we have four prismatic strands, which should be showing up anytime soon, and we're not gonna win this one. I could flash back the sands, but I'm not gonna. I think some of these games are going a little gratuitously long. I gotta pay attention to the channel and such. All right, I'm gonna bring in one more journey. Like seeing those, like seeing those. Priest is decent. Raise the alarm, such a nice trick if they run over with uh, unchecked. Hmm. I'm going to take out a Traveler and hope for the best. Alright. Well, that was exciting anyway. 1-1. One, one. Here comes game 3. Yeah, Forbidden Alchemy is one of those cards. I, I'm always curious why it's not in a lot more lists. Oh, this is good times. Very good times. Those of you that don't know, this is really good against Hexproof. Sometimes Stompy. Depends on the pilot and, and how they strategize. And very good against Elves. One of the only reasons I tend to beat Elves is dropping a standard bear. Yeah, I don't think you ever have to worry about us playing uh, Delver Mirrors there. Gobi Guy 01. <laughs> Maybe a little fight. I'm not much of a, much a fan. Okay, we're feeling pretty good here. I mean, we, we've got a slow roll, but we've got the... The weird combo if something comes out maybe we'll save it for an archer or a gnarled uh, we don't have to worry about anything really being enchanted here this has got to just be talk about a gut shot this has got to feel like a punch in the gut but he might have an answer here let's see what he pulls <laughs> cap up good saying little fight yeah I like new decks too go we got one that's the a little too much so that's why we've been uh, kind of in the losers bracket the last couple of weeks but like I said there was a, a comment on YouTube uh, with regards to a deck and was, and I, I just flat out said I was like we're not gonna hide like bad outings and be like oh well that didn't happen and of course it happened you know any any deck can run bad or and on top of that if you're trying to twitch on top of everything else it, it can get pretty ridiculous did anybody see what he pulled I oh, hey all right so now we're 3-0. We're right into the, the match here. Um, like I said, we're playing a we're playing a serious deck because uh, got a little bit of concern last week, getting a little too rogue friendly. This is the deck I'm running. It's very similar to the one that uh, we one of our very I think it was our very first episode or video on Propaganda, which was my uh, tokens deck. Maybe you can find a link for that little fight. And uh, if anybody's curious or hasn't seen it yet, uh, it's. 99% the same as I was saying earlier we're playing the Fairy Macabre just for Drake insurance and kind of out of respect my biggest point to make certain cards are better in certain decks that should be of no surprise to anybody then there are cards that are just obscenely off the chart Empire strikes back what any <laughs> sort of thing you want to say to it prismatic strands and tokens is like playing eight mythics because you have a Wrath of God if you play it right and block and it, you're not playing against, you know, white. And you're able to kill all their board, none of your guys, at instant speed and do it twice. It's just phenomenal. I used to run three for a long time. And every time I draw one, I'm like, why am I not running four of these? I mean, it just helps in everything. So, yeah, I like these basics too. This is an old callback to my uh, invasion love. I, I had my best paper outing in a pro tour on a in the invasion block and i didn't play white mana but when i got heavily into magic online the invasion b block was came online and i i was just like oh, i want to have matching lands, so i'll choose these and they've been thumping people for over a decade now so good times and it's funny too that his history of white decks like my uh, old uh Oh, the, I'm sorry, the link to the very first video on Propaganda with, um, it's called the Tokens, it's just the Tokens uh, tutorial, not a fight, but uh, the, in the old days, like 2005, 6, 
I always remember Muck, which was before Delver showed up. It was just Cloud of Fairies with a lot of counter magic and stuff. It, it would have its way with White Weenie. Like White Weenie would tend to almost beat every, would be like the deck, but then you'd run into blue and it was like, eh, time to give it up. And it's so funny, the duopoly that's happened with now um, Delver and stuff. It's like our easiest matchup, I mean, by far. Look at these numbers, like I was saying earlier. This is this is no typo. We've, we have 183 wins to 41 losses. Uh, I've played, who's the pro that, uh, Mongoniao, he's uh, Patrick Chapin. I I've, I've almost felt bad because it was about a year or two ago he was he was playing some couple weeks straight of Delver and I had the privilege of playing him and not lo dropping a single game to him. It was a very good time. I've never really confirmed if that's his username or not, but I've heard online from a lot of forums that, that it is. So, and it was, he, he played great, but it was just, it's hard to beat this deck when you're running that yeah not not really a fan of this hand but we're gonna keep it and just see what we got drawing anything and there's a lot of decks that priests can really mess with but if like we're playing against drake right now we're kind of dead in the dead in the water with this draw and we'll roll with this and hope for the best so we're 3-0 right now playing tokens the first two rounds i will replay just for the sake of speed and not keeping everybody here so long. Oh, boy. Running a Hexproof and Elves. It's like, gosh. Well, we've already played Delver technically, but this will go a long way in this matchup. Double Priest draw. Good times. Thanks for that, Shirazamon. A little behind-the-scenes magic. Shirazamon helped us out big time last week. Little Fight was absent, and he was able to be our little stand-in mechanic for the SS metagame propaganda, whatever the hell you want to call it. Hey, Shirazman, you got to cap up, baby. This will be interesting. Hopefully we get some Journey to Nowheres for some Timber Watches, or he, if he plays really aggressive here, we might just be able to uh, lose this one, because usually Elves takes this first game Well, this is looking pretty good. We're gonna shock him every elf he plays. So, what turned out to be like I was saying, you know, sometimes this is a looks like kind of a clunky hand. You have to treat tokens. It's funny because Guardian's Pledge is such an aggressive card, but it's like the only thing that make that lets this deck kind of turn a corner and go aggressive. And it's a good defensive play too. And it's kind of its own little similar Wrath of God effect if you play it right. However, that's why I've cut it to three. It's it's, it's you usually want to wait till at least turn five or six and you have very rare draws where it's like okay turn three pledge I mean, that's maybe happened like twice against opponents that are mana screwed and, and you you have another one in hand that that sort of thing now our um oh gosh i hate when this happens i accidentally have six so that now i have to tell the suture priest to do that every single time our battle screech is going to pay a lot of woes here Probably be able to run in and maybe trick a pledge throughout. We'll see. Unless a well wisher shows up, and then all this uh, little trickery is going to be washed out pretty fast. We don't like to see that. I'll yield to that. Yeah, all the cool kids are doing it. That's right. I was laughing because I was watching. I think it was the a source from the or a, a broadcast from uh, the. Mana source, and he tends to write in all caps, and I'm like, free advertising. <laughs> yeah, if you guys like this new darker screen, that was Little Fight's idea. I was like, yeah, it's a little more pleasing on the eyes. Stare at a screen for this long. Want to get get rid of as much white as possible. We got a little hiccup here this all right good times good times two three four ram some more boy I am tempted to attack that into that vanguard when do you guys vote I think I should always yes always yield if you're new to this deck you always want to do it in this order Boy, I'm tempted. 
Really, really, really tempted. Ah. It's pretty hard to s He has to go Nova here with creatures, and that's a free shock every turn. Unless Trample shows up. Not feeling too bad. I'm liking this. I don't really like visionary builds. Nothing against the card. Beautiful artwork. Hey, anybody out there trying the, those uh, new wallpapers? If you didn't know, don't know what I'm talking about, I had one or two uh, requests, including one from Little Fight, to just kind of make the back background of your laptop propaganda themed. I want to go really subtle, and like I was just talking about, not too bright. So there's some free desktop backgrounds on the uh, Facebook page if you want to download those and change your desktop background or not. No biggie. Yeah. Hey, Little Fight, you thinking you're going to be able to roll tomorrow or let everybody know now and we can kind of get some get some audience there. Might be trying to Twitch for the first time tomorrow. It's interesting. Here we go. I, why didn't I flash back to Battle Screech? What the hell's wrong with me? I'm talking too much. I take this guy seriously. What is that doing sitting in my damn graveyard? That's terrible. Horrible play. I should forfeit now and just give him a win for that. It's atrocious. Uh-oh. Because of that. Son of a gun. All right. Well, we could just run at him and hope for the best. I think we're going to do that, folks. Twelve. He blocks two of them. That's three, six, nine, and he dies. So hopefully we can time this up. I don't see a uh, Quarian Ranger. So, and if he blocks with all of them, we're we're all right too. Yeah, Tron is a pretty awesome deck. Good case of a little too late on the front. One turn from gaining life. Okay. So we're going against elves. It's really similar to hexproof. In fact, Probably the same. I wish I would have wrote down what I did. Travelers. These guys look good on at first, but everybody knows elves just gets too big too quick, and two first strike is just a, a power sink. It's not, not going to be worth anything. We like all our journeys in this matchup. Not really the aggressor here, and knowing he's going to he's going to bring in things like um, I'm going to take out the rallies. If I do if I do draw the pledge, I it's 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 got to be our little home run shot. Got defense built in there, there and there. Standard bear. We're gonna really. It, it's gonna be interesting if he if he's playing a lot of scatter shots. Um, pulling double duty with that prismatic strands and such. Um, you know, sends enlistment while might gain us life. There's too much ground. There's too many ground critters. Thinking I might. Just for this matchup, I might cut one of those. And yeah, there's not much early attacking going on either. Actually, I'm going to cut two raise the alarm and bring back sins. The longevity there. Reason being, uh, elves doesn't tend to attack, and you don't usually uh, tend to attack into a 2-2 two -two with, with the 1-1, one -one, so it's just there to gain life, and they're playing plenty of creatures anyway. So the more I'm thinking about this matchup, raise the alarm doesn't seem that good. I mean, there's there's the occasional. That's why we're going to leave two in there. Occurrence of they're going to they're going to run at you and make a mistake, thinking you you know you have nothing to do. But our prismatic strand should serve a lot of uh, room in this deck. Yeah, we'll keep it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
yeah, you guys keep saying stuff about me not doing well, I'll start playing really boring, typical decks. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to keep this one on the draw, and I've got I've got the Killer Squad. If we draw planes, this is pretty good. I mean, it'd be awesome if we had the uh, Standard Bearer, but... I mean, mission statements to bring new stuff out and trial by fire. Planes. Nope. That's still pretty good. Let's drop this and start gaining life and hoping we draw a plane. One or two more planes will be good to go. It's pretty easy to go infinite and pauper if you play a you know serious deck and you have any sort of experience with it and you're good at sideboarding. Like I've always said though, I mean I'll I'll do this one day and then I'll just go have fun with you know I've been really itching to play that uh, Green Land Destruction deck again. That's just a that's a hoot. I'm not really. I'm gonna save this for other fish. I'm just gonna bring out the pain. I'm actually going to attack here. I'd be happy to get rid of the priest for that because we've got other life gain. Get free damage in. Might mean the difference. We'll see. Just really want to get that second priest out and off to the races. Tolpan, thanks for joining us, bud. Good to see you. Tolpan, I, I don't understand what you're saying. It's some weird language. I've never seen those kind of characters before. Same with you, Golby Guy 01. You guys speak in Swahili or something or typing it? It's coming through all weird. It's like these tiny little letters with no energy. Woohoo! Alright. Here come the big guns. Thought that was. I think we might just be able to kill him with the priest, which does happen. We'll showcase the power of prismatic strands. It's like the Death Star. And this, when this card is fully operational, it's the most powerful thing in the universe. Yeah, man. Getting lost here. Super Priest, a bunch of needles on the battlefield, elves tiptoeing around them, getting stuck every time they do anything. Come on, one more planes. We go boom, boom, sit back on this. A little Wrath of God strike, and then kapow. That's how it goes in my brain anyway. We'll see if it happens. Probably not. So here comes a big old pile of ouch with, I'm sure, that blue mana signals. Hey. Oh, what's that card? That's one of those cards I, I always forget. Whisperings, uh, Distant Melody, that's right, Distant Melody. Anyway, Shirazman, what I was talking about earlier, that Terry Pratchett book's called Slip of the Keyboard, and it's not a, um, like a novel, it's just a, a bunch of his ramblings from all over the world, spanning like 50 years, some of them are even like his, his schoolyard notes, but it's good, it's good reading before bed, just sit there and kind of giggle and stuff, it's pretty good. It's expensive book, though. I think it's the most expensive. That simple paper bag is like 18 bucks or something. Yeah. Interview the suture priest. Man, I need a lozenge after doing that voice. Good grief. I mean, I put a pretty heavy effect on it too, but uh, I did like 20 takes and I lost my voice for like a day and a half. Plus, I, I do some voiceover work at work and it, it kind of affected my job, <laughs> but in a good way. I happen to do a, a really dark, evil sounding promo and the little extra grit and raspiness made me sound a little bit like James Earl Jones in the for a day or two. Shirazaman, the book is called A Slip of the Keyboard. There's our Journey to Nowhere target. <laughs> Gargle with thumbtacks. Do not suggest that, but need to know. All right. So I'm um, all right. We'll just auto yield there. I usually want to save that for, for that, but I think really need a plane here. I mean, I would love to drop the suture priest, but 
I've got to take that well wisher out of commission. Ooh. Getting dangerous. That's what we don't want to see. That's all right. I mean, this is a fire blast right here. There's two, and then the trigger is two. Better watch out. Yeah. You can read that now, Tolpan. <laughs> Love this. Everybody's in all caps. This is a family, baby. Good times. All right. We got a big old fatty. No, uh, son of a gun. Come on. All right. Well, I'm pay our dues here. Can't cast many more creatures here and live. And we got enough life. There's no timber watch out right now. Best case scenario, he doesn't draw one. We get a plane, we drop a suture priest, and then it's a lightning bolt for every creature he plays. Normally I don't tag the well wisher with Journey, but I had to make an exception there because with this it could really bring it bring him back from the Stone Age. Yeah, I've been hoping he uses the hunt master. Too bad he's realized. This is interesting. It's like, what, are you going to draw lands? Anything else kind of hurts you here. Boy, if I get that other Sutra Priest out. I mean, and this is a kind of an awkward opening draw. And for 20 lands in this deck, we should have, we should have hit a land by now. And once we do, it's, it'll really be over. Like I said, optimal play is land, Sutra Priest, Traveler, Gain four life, rinse, repeat, and then it's a uh, ninety percent of his deck is a lightning bolt to his own face. It gets pretty ugly pretty fast. Yeah, keep an eye on the vanguard, but not too worried about it. Not many trample effects and traditional elves, and so some sends enlistment tokens or the doom traveler will block it, gain four life, and keep moving. Again, if you're just joining us or a little late to the broadcast, we did the first two rounds um, offline, and we'll just review them later just for speed's sake so that these things don't go over like a three-hour mark and we're not waiting for opponents and stuff. It just seems to be like the new formula moving forward. Have two in the bank and then play the rest of the games online and keeps everybody. Plus, there's all that stuff happening on Magic's main feed today with the World Championships going down. You guys like anybody? That... Uh, Shoto, I think, from Japan. I have a weird feeling he's gonna he's gonna do it. I haven't seen what the standings are. I know it started on Thursday. My hats off to those guys, boy. It probably feels a lot like this. Eight hours of, of magic like that, but I wonder what he's looking for. Probably another well wisher. Yeah, elves and rancor. Well, there are some elves that. Grant, uh, the Elvish Herder, I think it is, from um, Invasion, I believe. I think that gives Trample to something, but so we got to respect this. So now our plan might change if we do drop a uh, planes. We might just sit back and wait to block everything and get some value out of uh, Prismatic Strands. We're at 21 minutes to 13. Now I'm playing more my style, right, little fight? <laughs> That's few. Telling you, man, that is some stressful stuff trying to uh, twitch and do all that stuff at the same time. And ugh, madness. Hopefully, none of you are waiting too long. Yeah, I've never seen uh, the Huntmaster shut off like this before. I always say that name wrong too. Liz Alana. We don't really need. It's going to get kind of crowded here quick, so I might have to shrink out on the aspect ratio of the cards here, but we'll let you know. Yeah, it is a little too much pressure, Golby Guy 01. Like I was, I've always complained, you know, you're trying to narrate and do, do 10 things at once, and then you got to play a strategy game. This ain't no point and shoot, so. 
It'll be neat to see Little Fight stress on the other end and see how he does with it. Ooh, boy. We're getting a lot of free Hymnoturox here. Well, a little inaccurate, but... Very interesting decks, anyway. Okay, so this kind of sucks now. Two, four, six, eight, nine. And actually, if we drew a land there, we might have it, but gosh, he might just kill us here. I think we got to go uh, sheer volume of blockers. Well, it started out f all fun and games, but now I'm a little worried. Of course, he's only going to be able to do the Ranger once because he doesn't have any lands out. So that's why I'm just gearing up on a uh, life gain here. And this will be funny because we're probably realistically going to kill him next turn with a Traveler token with the uh, Guardian's Pledge if anybody sees it. That's my prediction anyway. Or we die. He's got to be a little nervous to attack into this too, so. Everybody's got decks like that that you're just, I guess just kind of born to play. This tokens, I, I remember I did that interview with um, Dan Horning on a Magic Gathering Strat years ago, and I used to call this white life, and it kind of sounded like some racist southern slang angle thing i didn't didn't mean it to but it was just gaining a lot of life and that was before soul sisters was a thing in uh, modern sorry i had to resize there just so you guys could see the whole game board and it went along all right and then boy once battle screech was printed it was it was over i've often thought there is a um there's an anthem effect that does the same thing and it's a sorcery and i often play this uh, guardian's pledge against like delver as a sorcery to see if it's a, did it resolve okay now i'll attack i find that's the better play over just having that surprise value and being countered and wiping out your whole team so okay so he cannot play another creature at least now let's get an elf count one two let's get this Oh, all right. So we're 4-0. We'll go right into the, the last matchup. Boy, this will be a definitely under two hours unless I run into a mirror or something like that. And again, stick around after this next match. I'll replay rounds one and two, as you can see right here. Um, they're really, really fun, good matchups against Delver and uh, RDW Red Deck wins. Do, do, do. Yeah, even with a bad land hand, that was a, a good example of of the strategy I spoke about I think in episode one of propaganda where there's no answer for life gain in pauper you can flaring pain stops damage prevention and COPs and even creatures with protection from whatever you can cast it and, and bypass that but there's nothing out there in pauper like modern has a lot of cards that say players can't gain life and there's there's little stopgap measures pauper that's a loophole there's there ain't nothing there and that's one of the main reasons we just absolutely crushed Delver. We're just they're they're designed to do like 20, 25 damage, and then they kind of, you know, cast themselves out. Whereas, as you just saw, you know, you start casting a bunch of creatures. It's like, well, that's a free turn. That's a free turn. That's a free turn. So we look at the matchups here, and I'm I'm really into this deck. We we have so your numbers might be a little bit different I, I even though I'm a very aggro player and a lot of people think I'm like crazy aggro I play this deck pretty defensively until the, the gates are open it's kind of a sure thing sort of a strategy but we've had some issues I've only played Drake twice with it and then Macabre came up and stuff but um, the Suture Priest was was pretty relevant yeah, I didn't think it would be I almost I was thinking of, of cutting it and stuff but you can see we've got and if, if you want to you want this list or any of the other ones feel free to drop us a line at uh, propaganda gmail.com free to share our inf our, our uh, experiences with you you are fiend is definitely the closest one um <laughs> block 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 thank you one nope block 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 very true i've learned that about six of these are ones that should have been over here and it's just maddening. Bugs and Pigs is actually a pretty tough matchup. Affinity can be, and it's getting more so because I took out the Rune of Protection from the very first version of the deck. 
I used to have that, um, as I explained last week, with uh, Affinity especially. If you take away red, you've gotten rid of Galvanic Blast, Fling, and a Tongue. So all they've got is 4-4 four, four fatties you can chump block, have fun with, or even bring this up. First strike them and they're, and they're out of it. When you have Rune of Protection Red, maybe the NTG block can bring that up. I like it because you get it early and relevant. Okay, I play it and now I'm just, you know, kind of a pain, a thorn in your side. You draw it late and you're winning and you, you don't want it, you cycle it. That's only good in a deck that's all in with white because it only cycles for white and it only, I mean, it only triggers for white. So unlike a Circle of Protection, which you can use any color mana, the runes, you have to be very careful and put them in very heavy white decks, 90% or higher. Yeah, Rune of Protection. And that cycling is what does it all. My old build uh, that the, uh, maybe we can link that again. I didn't even see if it happened the first time, the first propaganda video we did about tokens. Very relevant. Like I said, it's about 99% this, this deck. We just adjusted it. Got a little bit weaker against Affinity to bring in Fairy Macabre and stuff, um, bringing up all four strands now. And let me move this over a little bit because it's it's kind of blinking into the uh, other card there. And uh, you know, funny funny little side note with production value with propaganda. You see the green and prismatic strands. The it was it was it was very funny what was happening with um, when you key stuff and. and film and TV and video and stuff, you, you, key, you key green. So I was doing this little trick where I would grab the card off of the, off of the desktop, but the damn green, if you look real closely and you, and you pause it, you'll actually see it kind of looks a little different because I, it took like two hours to get that to not show my hand underneath the card. Like it looked like this little digital disturbance wherever there was green. I was like, son of a gun, the one card I want to do this trick to, and I pick one that has literally the same green key as a, as a green screen. So a little funny insight. Thank you for that little fight. All right, last round, but again, don't leave after this. we got lots of good stuff. I'll take a quick break and come back and explain the rest, and hopefully we'll be, uh, we're just at about the hour mark right now. Hopefully this will be a nice quick boom, boom, boom to differentiate from the other ones. Yes, we will play. Yeah, we'll keep it. Don't have any life gain, but you never know. We'll bring the card size up again. I'd like to have some gain life, but you never know. It might be a... Uh, Mono black, who knows? Probably one of our worst hands. Oh, now this is this is the scenario where we where we can lose this because this uh, I I need life to beat this deck, and the few times that this loses, it's to a daze or a bone splitter early builds, and and getting like mana screwed, which isn't going to happen here. But it'd be nice to have the life the life gain. But uh oh. This got this just got heavy because this is you are fiend. I'm pretty sure now. I should have saved that journey to nowhere for something else. Colby guy, we'd love to take a look at the deck and give you feedback. You want to? Uh, well, I don't know if it would be good in the in the text window. But maybe email it to us or discuss with Little Fight. Maybe how that would work best. Because if you if you post the list and then everybody chats in, they're gonna have to, it's gonna be a scrolling battle to keep going back to it. Let's see, I'm going to play this guy early. Uh, I hate this. I've got nothing to do on turn three. This curve is terrible right now. Take that. One damage. Ooh, and he didn't pitch. Mistake, or maybe he's got some uh, another ponder. Thank you, little fight. Hopefully I do a good of a backup quarterback as you do. I'm going to have to have a tech meeting about what happened at the beginning of the show. That's strange. It's a neat little sinkhole artwork for that one, isn't it? The bog. Okay, well, looks like we're playing some sort of a Delver Angler, probably. This guy's gonna get pissed because he just dropped a bog, and here comes my one answer for it. Point. And we've got backup for Shrivel, or maybe uh, some of the other ones, but not not much else. Oh, okay, that's. Man, well, that's actually good to know that it wasn't wasn't you, but I think that will be an issue moving forward if we do share the account. We'll discuss in a bit. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So we can already get him down to eight life if nothing happens here. These are those scenarios where, I, you know, if he has an edict, it's like so what, and then if he drops the angler, it's like so what. It's just a time walk and walks into a little doom traveler and he goes off and flies in the clouds. Again, not saying Angler's a bad card, it's just everything under the sun blocks it. 
Nice if we were gaining any sort of life here. What's going on? All right, so we'll cast this. Come over the top here, two, four, six, eight. I think we can maybe catch this guy. Maybe tapping out. I'm not sure. I don't want to walk in like a condescender. I mean, we could just tap it, but rather keep a little defense there. So what'll be fun is if we do draw an anthem, we can kind of bait the counter spell out this way and then keep moving the other. We'll see. Just win. That's all you care about, Gobi Guy 01. I like new ideas. Winning gets boring sometimes. Not lately, though. Way too much rogue. There's never enough for me. Check off the stuff I've talked about. I got little notes here in case the conversation goes dry. Come on over. I guess I could do that. It would be funny to rally right now and trip the quicksand. And he's probably sitting on a uh, edict effect, thinking like, "Oh, now I'll get it." And I kind of want him to, because if he goes down that many cards, I, I should be all right. Gain in life, good times. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Or I want this to land, so I'm going to play this. Hoping it draws a counter. If it doesn't, it's all good. At least we'll see what's in his hand, right? Golby Guy 01. I really. I can't read what you're saying, Golby Guy 01. Thought it said something about a lone missionary. Typical bait switch tactic there. Like here's a, and you can't blame them, you know. Here's a good card. You'll see in the Delver matchup there are a few times you can blame them. It's like counter happy. I wish that that term would catch on. I love calling people counter happy. This guy's like really main deck order of lit beer. Old school. All right. So we've got two of those main. Kind of boarded again or up for this. I don't know if Fairy Macabre is worth bringing in. We saw we saw some tricks. I'd I'd rather just be the problem here. We've got plenty of defense. We've got main deck hate, and we've got four journeys. I don't think we're gonna board anything here, guys. Shrivel and stuff is is doesn't do damage, so the prismatic strands isn't really needed. That's where we've got, you know, effects like this. The Luma Thread. Yeah, let's make some room for Luma Threads. I forgot about this little dude. Let me see. You know, we're going to take out the Suture Priests. It's not like he's casting a ton of creatures and we're going to bring in the Luma Thread. That way our mana curve stays exactly the same and Shrivel doesn't nail this. If you're unfamiliar with Luma Thread, it's the only in creature that turns into an enchantment at instant speed. Very relevant, very cool. Counter happy. That's right. And it gets them on tilt a little bit too. You sit there and you you, you put something out there and they counter it and you, you type to them and you just go, man, you seem a little counter happy. I've always noticed that just kind of gets them a little like, hoot, hoot, hoot. if that's a word. How would you spell that? Yeah, we'll keep this. A little too aggressive here. I'm serious. I might, I might cut even another pledge the way I've been playing this lately. It's not wrong to have four. It's nothing really wrong. It's just determining the play style there. I think we're gonna we'll drop our ten and start getting the life going. The second we have a window, we're gonna sneak this through. Everything else takes second place, second fiddle to it. We don't care. Yeah, if they go to a black control deck, we got that in spades with Doom Traveler, this and this, and everything set up. Alright, we got a nice little window open here. Unless he's playing a null, which I don't know why he would. I was thinking 
could have a pretty fun little Halloween party when Halloween comes up. We'll get the candles out and we'll play maybe a zombie deck and lose badly with it. That'd be pretty fun. Maybe we can uh, change the time to like evening or something. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's a worldwide show. Can't be egocentric and think it applies. Applies to me. It's, it's going to be midnight somewhere. So we just took out about five of his cards if he's playing a standard list with unless he's you know waits long enough to have cap size but so we'll start hopefully we draw another plane right now quicksand doesn't feel like a good card but believe me it it's it's worth the two in the deck uh, thanks for that why do i need such a long name yes i would like to use this effect here's what i was talking about the other day we got a little opening we take it and you attack here because as I warned in episode two that does not block and man I see so many replays I almost want to do a montage of it not very bad players either they just oh, they just constantly run into that run into that so we can avoid our attendant dying this turn we're gonna be in really good shape because we'll probably draw a counter with one of these for edict effects and then because that's really his only way around this uh, the order. Come on, let me untap. Oh, super Meat Boy, Magnet's Robe. Good call. Kids love that game. So nice and old school. Good to have you aboard. I don't think I've given you a shout out before. Thanks for joining us today. Let's see. We'll go. Go like this. We'll go like this. Here we go. And he's. Let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just attack with this guy. Be the aggressor here. I kind of want to encourage swinging so that our pledges come online. All right. So again, shrivel here. You need double shrivel. Two mana one still kills his guy, does two more damage. We'd lose our guys, but we'd still have two guys in Edict Insurance, especially when we drop the next one. Now, to do it now or later, I think I'm just going to take this. Drop another one. Up another one. Yeah, we're 4 0 right now. This is the last round, but I'll replay the first two rounds. Nobody saw those. Just a way of preventing this feed from going into the three, four hour mark. It's a little ridiculous. I'm not seeing. Uh, he's probably got the. Uh, he's probably going to hard cast the justice here, I would assume. It leaves us with three creatures. He's tapped out, and then if you do the math, almost there. Oh, Gobi Guy One, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll we'll have this up on YouTube probably later, so just uh, you'll be able to see the uh, replays of round one and two. Again, then we faced a uh, red deck wins round one, Delver round two. What was it then? Uh, a weird hexproof variant round three, which must have been undefeated to get there. So laugh all you want, but. It sure seemed interesting. Let's see. Oh, putting a little respect on my name. Look at that. Here's a good example. Oh, boy. Let's see if he's got a counter now. Good luck with the adulting. What does that mean, need to know? <laughs> I haven't been reading the chat all that much. What's going on here? Deprive. All right. Well, I can play the life game. And Deprive usually means he's probably not running counterspell. Forgot what land he turned back. Was it the... No, uh... oh, that was last game. Oh, Accumulated Knowledge came on board for a lot right there. Look at that. 
Yeah, well, Hex might have had some bad draws. It didn't seem like he missed his land at all. If I remember right, he had multiple ethereal armors and masks in every hand and looked pretty darn good to me. I play Hexproof. A lot of times you get you kind of stumble on land or one critter or whatnot. <laughs> I just think those journeys and his impatience of putting him on a non-Hexproof creature was what really cost him there. Could have been a lot closer. The hate is strong in this one. <laughs> Alrighty, sir. Come on over. Give me your little justice move here. Alright, three life comes on back. So here's a good example of when I cast Pledge, depending on what we draw next, as a main deck card, which is why I've often thought, because Dispel is so popular, of switching it to the sorcery based one, which would look like a, a mistake to anybody just casual observer of the, the game, but I don't know, it's uh, that would be interesting, huh? Boom, boom, boom. So I'll try to draw out another um, get ourselves a counter. Let's see. What's going with this? This isn't by any means done. He's he's got a ton of he's drawn almost twenty cards more than I have, or he has actually. This isn't in the bag just because we got a pro pro black dude and He's probably going to grab that key counter spell to keep us on the on the deck. Need to know says Priest of Norn, so sick. Hey, what you guys talking about? White infect again? That is a good card. Looks like a complete silly card at first glance, and then you see it in play, it's like, oh wow. I predict that that Kaladesh set will be Litifite's new favorite. Oh, cool. Magnet's Rogue. Sorry, I missed your comment about the uh, White Infect. That's great. Good to see you putting the feet to the fire. Okay, let's do some math here. I don't want to really take all of that. Uh, it's time to block with one of these dorks. Let's see. Can we still kill him? That would be... Um, it's 12. Cancel... I'm going to take it all. Played Priest and Just Guy List with Slagworm Armor and Inside Out. <laughs> wow. Got to have a visual on that one. Lordy. Ooh, this is getting steep. Well, this either works or we're dead, I think. Let me see. You can always keep that guy back. If I go for it here, I've got to block stuff. I'm going to play aggro and go for it. Got a counter spell? Probably. There it is. Let's see. Block, 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 block. I'll still roll this way. A little nervous here. Might pull this one out. He might even be digging for like the second shrivel to just completely decimate the board. He has every right to. The guy's drawn like 20 more cards than we have, so good times. Yeah, he's getting set up for some sort of alpha strike. 
He's got to be a little worried himself, though. Because if he's not holding justice, then we're really going to be able to kind of push through some flying damage next turn. If he holds back an angler, look at the pro black dude. There's one. Let's see if it happens. This is going to be well deserved. Yeah, he deserves this. Of course, this dude's dead. And if we block one, we're still alive. Which I'll do. It was a good play. Bring this up now. We're pretty dead, but... Boy, did I call that one. Digging for a double shrivel. I don't know. Why do I need such a long name? It felt pretty bad to me. Three. Not enough. Well, we can block with the flyer. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've got to just let everything die. I'm just going to concede here. All right. Game three. Let's see if we can get a 5-0 if we win this next one. If not, or at least... 4-1, guaranteed. Anything I like, disliked about stuff? Hmm. Accumulated, eh, accumulated knowledge sure did showcase there really well. Yeah, I'm liking everything we got there. It'll be fine. Shrivel's so key because it just doesn't do damage. Love that card. So much better looking than Nausea. Well, we've got our stuff. I'm going to mulligan this out of respect. Now I'll keep. Hmm. I'm going to throw that on the bottom. Just really want to set up the inevitable here. Squadron Hawk, nice for you to show up. Lordy. that in so many builds and I'm like barely seeing the damn thing. No, I'm gonna drop Squadron Hawk right now. I just I wanna I don't want it to get countered. I wanna have that white brainstorm. Good way to think about it. Always yes, always yield. And uh, yeah I'll attack and you be glad to trade that. So he reveals a counter spell. So now we're going to have to uh, try to bait that counter spell out. Well, there's a good way to do it. Hmm. We'll attack here. Sweet bird of Jesus. <laughs> that just made me giggle. Alright. That's good times. I'm just going to cast this. Hopefully he's counter happy. Kind of a silly thing to counter, but I like to do stuff on their turn. And when we do draw another land, we'll act like we're kind of tongue-tied with the warden. We'll drop it, hoping to draw the counter. Hopefully he is counter happy, and then we'll drop a Luma Thread Field behind it because I've got a feeling this guy kept this hand because he's got really good removal in the form of Shrivel. Just needs to hit that one draw spell or that one black to set it apart. Okay. So we'll go like this. Darn it. Really hoping he'd counter it. Oh well, we can at least start killing, uh, take a counter or kill Delvers. And yes, we will block these. Just sitting on that counter spell. Yeah, he might he might know better. He might have a black source in hand and a shrivel. And in that case, this is going to look grim really, really fast. 
I've got to kind of, oops, I shouldn't have attacked with the hawk, just kept it back, oh well. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at the luck, look at the luck. He brain, he mental notes and both shrivels go to the yard. He sent me a message, it must, it, it must be bad. Wow, yeah, that says it all, that, that tells me that's his only shrivels in the deck. Poor guy, been there. Ponder. All right, Hods, good to see you. Catch the replay, we'll have it on YouTube in 24 hours or so. It's amazing how fast this uploads these huge files because it's kind of done all that hard work and coding live. Again, great to see everybody. Great weekend of magic, not just here, everywhere. Check out the uh, mothership. There's a lot of good stuff going on. So he's got a counter spell. So we got our planes. Oh, this this is beautiful. So we're gonna go counter, please. Might not mean that much to him at this stage. Counter, please. All right. Well, that's fine. Yeah, this is this is neat too. Inherently, people think that these little one ones are one ones, but you, you do the math and we trade. It's still a one for one trade if I double block outside of a bounce trick. <laughs> Sweet bird of Jesus. Yeah, we might have to just quote quote yourself on that one in a few more episodes in one of our little card frames there, little fight. As some profanity is that way. It just makes you laugh. You don't know why. It's just a guttural thing. So let's see. Nothing. Nothing. Come on. Let's get a pledge going here. Ah. There's a drawback of kind of going all out here because if he does do the Evan Carr's justice or gets it going, I'll, he'll be killing his own guys. And I don't know what the worth would be in holding another hawk. I'm probably going to just start swinging here pretty fast. Get him at least a little nervous. Of course, maybe he's not even running the justice. Maybe it's just shrivel. Next turn, two, four, six goes through. Yeah, still not that good of a play. Pizza. I had a, almost a Slesnia breakfast. I had a avocado and just some egg and mushed up with a little bit of gruel sauce on it. Talk about magic meals. Keep it light, baby. Now oh, come on. Four, six, eight. No. Uh, I'll keep that for Sen's enlistment. Ah, this is maddening. I feel this one slipping away the more cards he draws. Just give me a give me an order or something. That's pretty. Boink. There's a little life in him. The Myers bringing back the angler. Ooh, he's turning it around. <laughs> Simic Slaw says, "Why do I need such a long name?" <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, if little fighter, I ever hit the lottery, we'd probably blow all our money on silly propaganda projects and trying to force the masses to adapt. <laughs> Counter spell up there. We got a dude coming up next turn. This is when you hope they counter. Excuse me. I love when people counter sends enlistment. It's that exercise in futility. It's like, really? Okay. Hey, next turn. Ding dong. He's back. Kithkin soldiers. 
I was about to make a uh, religious joke reference, but I'll, I won't. I don't want to get any hate. It has to do with doorbells. All right. Counter. I like that. It's almost like a duress. Guess what I'm going to do next turn? And the turn after. And the turn after. And the turn after. Boy, turning to nowhere would be nice. A lot of things would be nice. Yeah, we probably would buy a compound and do this 24-7. I'd have to get like a robotic hand though. That or stop editing so much. I gotta remember to show you guys the, uh, I've got two new little commercials. One's a uh, Lord of the Rings parody I put inside of a magic card that I did a few, quite a few years back, but found it on one of my old accounts and made it magic relevant. So, and right after that, I'll, I'll do, the, uh, do the replays. See if we can get another counter spell. This guy's pulling it off. Not feeling too good here. He's got quite a bit of hate. We're not drawing our journeys. And this is usually the matchup, I mean, with two main deck orders. It's never easy. I mean, they've always got answers, but um, we're not gaining that much life because he's countering all this stuff. Those birds are picking us up. In fact, let me see. Delver, Turbo Angler, 79 and 11. This is when it first came out, so I, I'm going to get rid of that slander because it's a pretty good deck now. There were some really janky builds when I first started with it. Tokens is funny. It's like nobody plays it. It's just like, why aren't you playing it? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me. It's a damn good deck. It's almost always good. Just bandwagon people. They just... Nobody's playing it, so it's like, all right, I'll bring it. Win, 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 win. Hopefully, fifth win. It is a tier one deck, my friends. Has to draw bad and run into just bunches of nothing. See, kill the attendant. Come on now. There's a lot of reasons he, sh he should have killed the other one because he's playing Echoing Decay. That might be relevant there. I think we're uh, going to lose this one, guys. This ain't looking too good. Maybe he gassed himself out there. Brainstorm. i have to congratulate him if he wins. Boy, throwing two shrivels in the yard and being able to pull this off against uh, some hate. I mean, we didn't draw the hate. It would have been nice if we had... Uh, our orders could really hold off a lot of this and... Let's see. Block, block. Bop, bop, bop. All right. Yeah, this is getting pretty grim. Looks like we're going to tie our infect, our white infect outing at 4-1. Maybe every time I play planes, I'll get 4-1. Maybe that'll be a theme. I'm just glad we beat Delver. If you really dislike Delver, this is the deck to play. It has game against everything out there. You know what? I believe I should. Well, I can't do that kind of a block. I was thinking of a quintuple blocking, but yeah, it's a smarter play on his end right there. Draw the life. Doo -doo -doo. And because of the shorter length tournament and stuff like that, I, I will be on later if anybody wants to joke around. See, if I played this deck, I would scrap the anglers and I would go with this. Just a full air package. Evasion is one of our main themes in the uh, next episode of Propaganda, and just oh, it's 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 so deluxe. All right, well, stick around. There's two more rounds. Um, he's probably gonna counter this. I'm gonna congratulate him to keep the PR good. Very gotta type in caps. Very nice comeback after double. Shrivel, ditch, impressed, good games. Yeah, he kills us no matter what, each way, next turn, so. 
Nicer you are to people and popper, better the format gets to be known as. Try to prevent yourself from going on tilt. You never know. Maybe it's the next the looks of call for <laughs> Little Fight or something like that that's going to make a big splash in the format or have a lot to give back, and you're, you're turning those people off. So anyway, um, I'm going to roll the commercial, guys, and I'll be right back with rounds one and two. Don't go anywhere. I'll take that, my man. Here at Magic's testing facility, gameplay technicians simulate every possible battle. Call in the Org and the Raging Goblin. What? The Goblin's out sick? Well, we'll have to proceed without him. Send in Bob from accounting. I'd say the first round goes to the Org. Magic the Gather, the trading card game. All right, everybody, we're back. This is round one. I clicked on the wrong one accidentally, uh, but it is round one. My first, and we're gonna, this is the replay just to prevent the tournament from going too long, but it will be fun to be able to narrate this. So I lead off with the Delver. This is the, we're playing against the deck with all the hasted creatures. So our priority is just to flood the game, hopefully gain some life, which we don't have any of right now, and trade early and often. Because once they gas out, we'll be all set. It's frustrating having an early quicksand with the jackal. I used to run one more land, but the flood just was happening all too often. I get rid of the quality creature, the jackal familiar. You don't really want to block. It's, it's A lot of times it ends up acting like a little island out there. This is a very good play of where Prismatic Strands comes into effect. He uh, attacks into this. Correct play. Drops that. But we're going to see just how ridiculously powerful Prismatic Strands is because we stop the electricery, we get a double block, we take no damage, as opposed to all of our creatures dying and him hitting us for six, none of our creatures die, we don't take any damage, and he loses a creature. Just play real nice and slow. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, he loses two creatures, excuse me. That kind of a little one sided Wrath of God. To rub it in, this is just a really good showcase of how crazy powerful Prismatic Strands is. And I value, I, I really value the uh, order there. Could argue that might have been a, a misplay, but I'm going to sit back and kind of try to bait the next the next one. And again, the, the deck being all red, Nemesis of White, got the answer in spades, block, nothing happens. We've got Counter Spell in the Yard, Wrath of God. Prismatic Strands gets out of hand pretty quick. Kaboom. Very frustrating to play against this deck. Again, I don't know. This is just a tilt play. One-sided Wrath of God. Watch this. Kaboom. Costs us nothing. Takes it all. And as you can see there, it's pretty lopsided. You just got to remember your place when you're playing this deck and, um, uh, excuse me, play accordingly. Ugh, not that. This is weird. When you uh, are done with the tournament, this little box comes up in the corner here. It's frustrating because it doesn't, I can't tell it since the last Windows update how to come back down. But it was just telling us we, we won whatever the 4 1 prize is because we did lose to Angler Delver. Real quickly, I'm going to go over to this and say 12. We beat Delver again. That is no typo. That is 184. Hex proof. I'm not even going to count that one because it was kind of a, a weird uh, version. I already logged the red deck wins. And then 
What else did we play? We played elves, and that goes up to 14. So I'll go back to um, play lobby. Sorry about that. Popper. And we'll go to match two. View the replay. Game one. This is against Delver. Why did it hide from me? Go like this. Oh, the Godhead deck, Shirazamon. Uh, let me pause it real quick because it's very easy to narrate too fast when you when you hit this on play. The Godhead deck's cool. Um, it was just a very interesting metagame call. I, I didn't take it into a tournament by any means. Uh, I'm not that crazy. But if I could have guaranteed I'd run into a lot of the top decks, I would have because so many of the decks like um, UR Tempo and like the Drake decks and well, a lot of, like the one we just saw, 90% of the time their removal package is red and so the, the theory was, well, I explained it on Facebook, that just if they're, if that's the case, that deck's like, it wins. And if it runs into goblins, it wins. And it has, it has some staying power against other decks. But again, that's just the that rogue component in me, unlike today. And remember, this deck I'm playing right now, White Life, started as rogue. And then there were one or two key cards like Battle Screech and stuff that came to fruition and actually turned this into a tier one deck, in my opinion. So... I'm going to pause quite often here. This is a pretty heavy lock already against um, Delver. Anything they do, I'm gaining a life. They're losing a life. We've just, well, you'll see. Oh, no, why do I need such a long name? I, I apologize. I think I I skipped. Now, here's a good uh, bait move. I can go back to that one. I probably won't. Just uh, it's, it's more of the same. I'll definitely play both rounds in this one, though. I apologize. I just misclicked. Um, that was a total bait move. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, this counter happy thing. Really, a 1-1, one, one, it's probably in this matchup the weakest deck again, uh, weakest thing against this. Blue doesn't really have removal other than bounce. It's a 1-1. One, one. It's only good if it dies. So why are you going and countering it? That was a, and you know, you don't, you don't play the extra land so that they think, oh, I gotcha. And you let them think that, you know, you're extra counter happy. Or they are. So then you drop it, and then the real pain begins. It's like, okay, well, here's another suture piece. I don't need to attack. You're hurting yourself. Go ahead, do four. We really want to see a ninja there. I've talked about the tempo of the turn against Delver a lot of times. I design a lot of decks around that. It's fine. Again, we play the thing that we want to get countered to see if he's got it. Here it comes. Here it comes. Opens up wide. Ninja gets the score. And now look at the life. We haven't attacked. Keep that in mind. It's, it's a hard lesson to get through to people sometimes. We have not attacked. And we're back. I mean, he's attacked us like four or five times. Drawn cards. Refilling our hand. It gets silly quick. This is why, unless your mana screwed or you just, they, they're they running like four dazes in their opening hand and just those scenarios it it's it's bad yes that's everyone starts saying counter happy I love it a little double block there remotion rally comes back to and we've got our ninja insurance broken in with quicksand this is nothing new to like the uh, the original video I mean this thing just to say that it destroys Delver is almost an understatement I think I could have about a full bottle of wine in me and still be a really good Delver pilot given the draw and just double block. We've got it. You don't. I don't think we've attacked yet. He's at eight life. And this is just when it just starts getting absurd. And I'm already. I'm longing to play something more rogue next week. I'll try not to. But like I said, I, when you've played this deck as many times as I have, you can kind of be on autopilot and at least go four one with it. Sorry, I didn't go five zero, guys. But we'll have to we'll have to live with that for now. For the spike community out there. Let me see. And away we go. So we'll go to the next round. Which is round two after sideboarding, obviously. Let's match up two. And whoop. here's the replay here. Always trying to hide it from me. There we go. Not that great of a hand, but 
Let's see what we can do. Excuse me real quick. Let me just move this frame because it's scooting over. There we go. Ah, see how the Doom Traveler black wasn't a thing, I'd probably put that dude that you can sacrifice it for two mana and it pumps up everybody by 1-1. One, one. Good little shrivel technique, tricks, stuff like that. This is the tempo of the turn I'm talking about. They take that whole setup and they get their, and you can't blame them, they get their ninja online and then you, you just go eat it. Of course, we don't even need to here. I mean, our Doom Traveler is going to wolf it down and then now as the game's progressed I'm like well I don't need to eat it I'll save the quicksand for that and we'll get rid of the real big threat here and we'll just start attacking in the air so I'm like you go ahead and I'll get more flyers if you missed that it was a Ramosian rally which killed the ninja but if it didn't we just still have the quicksand I'll be right back after this folks This is my city, my home. After years of searching, I've come to find a refuge from this life of endless turmoil. But of late, activities amongst the guilds of Ravnica has drawn my attention. The Azorius magistrates behave with impunity, imposing ever greater dictates upon the citizenry. While the back and all of Rakdos has taken on an added fervor, giving me pause in light of other guild activities such as those of the quietly powerful Selesnians, preparing themselves for something, and to what end. And the Golgari, providers of questionable sustenance, their rot lies under the surface, for now. As for the Izzet, the mad thinkers, Ravnica's frenzied engineers, their activities have intensified, and more guilds remain. I sense another power at work. A potent mind I cannot identify. What force is at work here? And what does it mean for Ravnica? Hey everybody, welcome back. Yeah, to speak to, why do I need such a long name? I wished it was a Kaladesh trailer too. I, uh, there's only so much time we have before the show to get everything prepped and ready. We'll definitely have that probably by tomorrow or at, at least next week, be uh, fresh on everybody's savory palates and such. Anyway, um, so that's it. We went 4-1 with White Life or Tokens or whatever the hell you want to call it. Soul Sisters, like any deck out there has just a ton of names. If you're curious about this deck, changes, blah, 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 we'll have uh, updates on Facebook. Or if you want more immediate access, hit us up at uh, popperkanda at gmail.com and we will share away. And until next time, uh, we're about 50-50 on tomorrow's broadcast about Little Fight. We think we're going to pull that one off. Or I don't know if you want to give the guys a uh, percentage here. But for now, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. This nice little uh, under two-hour mark, and we got all five rounds in. So I think we might be doing it this way moving forward, win, lose, or draw, as is often the case. Anyway, this is Deluxikov signing off. Little Fight, thanks for being my backup. Shirazamon. Need to know why do I need such a long name? Missed you, missed your name. Love it, love it, love it. Good times, and we shall see you next time, everybody. Adios. What's the largest number you can think of? Um, hundred thousand. Nine hundred ninety-nine thousand. A million. In actual fact, it's neither of these. The largest number is about forty-five billion. Although, mathematicians suspect that there may be even larger numbers. In the arms of the angel, away from here, from this dark, cold hotel room, and the endless that you fear. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Will you be an angel? Please, call the number on your screen right now. For just $18 a month, only 60 cents a day, 
You'll help rescue cops and their abusers. Please call right now.